In this video, we're going to look at what a midpoint is and how do we find it. So just to give you some basics, if this, was a, this is a number line that I've drawn right here. And if I put a couple points on it, so let's say that I put a point at 3, for instance. So I'm going to make a red dot there. And let's say that I also put a point at negative 1. Now I'm going to go ahead and kind of shade this. Imagine this is a line that is on a number line. Now on a number line that goes left and right, if I wanted to find a midpoint, it's fairly easy, right? We would just count in from where we are. For instance, we're currently at 3 and we're at negative 1. That's as far as it goes. And if I want to find the midpoint, I want to find the middle of this. So I could count in one unit and then notice in between these two lines stands the value of 1. So 1 would be my midpoint. To make things simple. It is just the middle of my line segment. Now we could use some math and we could figure it out by math as well um, if we wanted to. And if we wanted to do this mathematically we could actually take negative 1 so I'm going to write it out here to the right negative 1 and I could add it to positive 3. Then, once we get that answer, I could divide it by 2. And that would tell me what my midpoint was. Now, obviously, we counted in right on this image, and you can clearly see that the answer is 1. But if we wanted to do this mathematically, we could say, okay, well, negative 1 plus 3, and that's the first position, right, the beginning of our line segment over here on the left, plus our ending point, right, which is the line segment, right, where it ends and terminates at this point on 3 on the right. And then we divide it by 2 because we want to get halfway through it. Think about it. Dividing by 2 is the same as multiplying by 1 half. And our goal is to get in the middle. So we want a half of a line segment. So if I were to go ahead and add those together, hit enter, and then divide by 2, notice it would give me a value of positive 1. So my midpoint, mathematically speaking, right, without an image, is simply 1, doing it mathematically. But if we have an image here, it's much easier, right? We can just count in and say, well, there's the middle. That's my midpoint. So no matter if you do it with a number line or if you do it mathematically, you're going to get the same answer. So now we're going to take this idea that we have here of how to find a midpoint mathematically and apply it to the coordinate plane. So I'm going to move this up just a little bit, and we're going to follow that same process. So let's say that we're given a point, and, and I'm just going to throw some points out there. Let's say we're given, and keep in mind, when I say a point, um, because it's in relation to a coordinate plane, we're going to do it in relation to x and y, right, an ordered pair. So I'm going to write right here, this is a ordered pair. Remember the x value is first. That's our left and right, right, for the x-axis. And then the y-value comes second. That's our up and down location on the y-axis that runs vertical. And so I'm going to go ahead and write a value of 2 for the x and a value of 4 for the y. And then I'm going to go ahead and write a value of negative 4 for our second ordered pair and a value of 4 for the y. Now, again, we, we, this basically just represents two points. I'm going to move this up just a little bit so you can see all of it. We have our first point. I'm just going to call that, we'll call that point A. And then we have our second point. We'll call that point B. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm actually going to graph that on here so you can see what that would look like. So if we have 2, 4, my x value is at positive 2. And my y value is at positive 4. So I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4. So this point right here is actually 2 comma 4. And we're calling that point A. So this is point A. Now my second point, we have negative 4 comma 4. So I'm going to go from origin. I'm going to count over to the left four times. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'm going to go up 4 because it says positive 4. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4. And I'll put a point right there. 
and this one right here is going to be labeled as negative 4, 4. And this is just to give you a visual of what's happening. So we have point A located at 2, 4, and we have point B located at negative 4, 4. And what we want is we want an ordered pair that represents the midpoint. In other words, we want to find the perfect center between these two lines if we were to connect them. And let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to connect them right quick. Now, on your work, your work is not having you um, plot points and connect them. But I wanted to give you a visual of what's happening. Your work is actually just giving you ordered pairs, and you're expected to find a midpoint. Now, just like that idea that we had up in the top, when I had this right here, right, I said that you could take the beginning point and end point, add it together, and then you can go ahead and divide it by 2, and you have your midpoint. We're going to use that same thing. So I'm going to write a formula from here for you for midpoint. So I want you to go ahead, write this on your paper. It's going to help you be able to answer these questions. I want you to write midpoint formula. Now, because we're dealing with two numbers, in the example above on the number line, we just had one value, right? And it was just like a horizontal. In other words, it was just on the x-axis. We had a negative 1 and a 3. However, when we're dealing with something like this where we have an ordered pair, we don't just have an x value that goes left and right. We also have a vertical value, right, or y value that goes up and down. So therefore, we're going to have two different sets of ordered pairs here when we write this formula. So our formula is going to be, respectively, we're going to have our x1 value plus our x2 value. And that will all be divided by 2 to figure out where our midpoint is in relation to x. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to do our next one, which is going to be our y1 value plus our y2 value. And that's going to be divided by 2 to give us our location for our y value. That's the formula that you'll be using. And so what we're going to do is, in order to use this formula, we need to label um, one of these ordered pairs, x1, y1, and one x2, y2. So what I usually do is I just usually go to the first one. And I'll label that one my x1 and my y1. Now notice I didn't write a 1 after it, it just says x and y, but I know that when it says x and y, that's x1 and y1. And then I need an x2 and y2. So I'm going to label the second one right here, x2 and y2. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute these values into my midpoint formula. So I'm going to rewrite this over here. So let me go ahead and write this out. Now instead of an x1, I'm just going to circle it. I'm going to get the value for x1, and I'm going to substitute it in its place. And I'm going to substitute that in parentheses. Anytime we replace a variable with a, with a value, we always want to put it in parentheses. So I'm going to circle my x1. My x1 value is positive 2. So I'm going to write a positive 2 in place of x1. And then I'm going to add that to my x2 value. So my x2 value happens to be negative 4. So in that one, I'm going to put a negative 4. And then this is going to be divided by 2, right? Because that's part of our formula. We replace the x1 value. We replace the x2 value. x1 was 2. x2 was negative 4. Now I'm going to put my comma there. This is going to give me the answer in just a minute of the new ordered pair. And I'm going to write that one right here. I'll write on top, answer. When we get our answer, we're just going to put it in there. But I'm going to want to set up the next one. I'm going to set up the one for y. So my y1 value is going to be my y1 right here, which is positive 4. And I'm going to add that to my y2 value, which is going to be positive 4. Now, this is an easy problem in the sense that this line, right, it's horizontal. But a lot of times, they're not going to be. It could be diagonal. And when it's diagonal, you're going to have a greater variance in the numbers that you're putting in here. And that's when this formula really comes in handy. So let me go ahead and divide that by 2. And now we can do the math. Now, most of you could probably just look at this, and you could do it in your head. But I, Mr. H uses a calculator for everything. So I'm going to use my calculator. So I have 2 plus negative 4 divided by 2. And if you wanted to put this in all at one time, you could. I recommend that any time you have something in the numerator, just put it all in parentheses. So Let's see, so we got 2, I'm going to put plus negative 4, right, all in parentheses. I'm going to hit enter, 
and it gave me negative 2. And then I'm going to divide that answer by 2. So I'm going to hit divide on my calculator. Notice when I hit divide, it automatically pulls the answer that I had. And it says ANS, that means answer, divided by 2. And it gives me negative 1. So for this right here, this x value is going to be negative 1. So I'm going to write that in my answer right here. That became negative 1. And now we're going to find the y. So I have 4 plus 4 divided by 2. So 4 plus 4. And then divide that answer by 2. And it gives me 4. And I'm going to put 4 in there. So now I have found my answer, right? By doing the math that I had set up with this midpoint formula, I know my location of the midpoint is negative 1, 4. And underneath it, I'm going to write the word midpoint. So the midpoint of these two ordered pairs that create a line segment is negative 1, 4. And I'm going to go over here, and we're going to go ahead and graph that. So I'm going to put a red dot. So I'm going to go over from origin over one time because it's negative 1. And then I go up 4. All right, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we'll call the midpoint M. I'll call that point M. And here's my point M, right? That was my point A over here and B over here. So now you know how to find the midpoint using the midpoint formula. And you're ready to solve all the problems on your paper.